Hi there, my name is Elena and I'm finally visiting Lviv. It's heavily fortified, probably one of the most fortified. The weather today is fantastic and we decided not to lose the time and to go on a one-day trip to the most famous Lviv castles. There are three castles which are included in what is called uh, Golden Horseshoe and we are right now in the first castle called the Olesko Castle. This is the birthplace of Jan Sobieski, one of the most famous Polish kings who fought uh, the Ottoman Empire. His grandparents were actually the ones who made this castle really comfortable for living and he had very fond memories of the castle itself so he gave money for the castle's restoration. The guide was so knowledgeable he threw a lot of historical facts at us which I'm sure we will not even remember a couple of days in the future but some facts did stay with us so if you got the chance to visit the castle definitely get a guide it's a little bit more expensive but then the whole tour makes just so much more sense for you. Honestly, the castle is not in the best of shape. It has been restored a couple of years ago um, during the Soviet times, but you can see the effects of Soviet restoration because the walls are green like in hospitals or kindergartens. A lot of the art objects that are um, shown here are from either different castles, either from people who had them in their houses or uh, have been donated by the Ukrainian art gallery. So it does make uh, a very interesting interior, but it's kind of sad to see that everything is kind of crumbling around the edges. We saw a lot of sculptures and paintings and artifacts, pieces of jewelry, and it all didn't make sense for us um, before he told us who was the owner of the things and what is the story behind them. When you go down from the castle to the park through the staircase, there are two lions here and they're called happy lions because they're smiling all the time. After spending almost an hour in the castle looking for all its cold corridors, it's finally nice to be walking outside in the sun and inhaling um, this aroma of fresh grass and flowers. Probably spring is one of my favorite times to travel. The castle was built in a very swampy region and when the first owner started living in the castle they decided they wanted to have a place where they could uh, stroll, they could walk, they could admire nature. This beautiful cypress alley is pretty much everything that is left of the gorgeous park that was here before. Obviously it looks pretty wild now, unkempt. Nevertheless, it is so nice to be here. A look at this medieval restaurant where we are the only guests. Coronavirus struck them really hard. They were before this, they were inside of the Olesko castle and right now they have bought their individual space. Cabbage, beans, uh, sour cream, potatoes. Either I'm super hungry or it's super delicious. The place is called Grednica for those of you who want to visit it. It's really cheap. You pay 270 grivnias for two portions of borscht, really delicious, really hearty, and two portions of potato vareniki. Overall, uh, five out of five for me. This is Pitgoretsky Castle for you, one of the most gorgeous castles that I saw here in Ukraine. And it's such a shame, it's in a really bad shape among the three castles that we are going to see. This is probably the worst maintained castle and the most beautiful one. It has been dubbed the Galician Versailles, which means it, back in the time when it was still like a decent castle, it was just gorgeous. It was inhabited by people 
up until the Second World War, after which it became a hospital for TB, for tuberculosis. And since then, uh, it really was a train wreck for the castle, unfortunately. Right now, the most beautiful part of the castle is outside. Inside, there are rooms, but there's nothing of the old furniture, the old objects of art there, just because the conditions inside of the castle are so bad, uh, the art would spoil if they would keep it here. The Pithirs castle is the only castle in Ukraine that is certified to have a ghost inside of the castle. The ghost is what is known as the White Lady. Apparently she was the wife, the young wife of one of the owners. So at some point after a party he got so jealous that he decided to kill her by building her inside of one of the walls in the castle. So it was a very mysterious death and uh, such a sad story for this castle. Just opposite of the castle is the Roman Catholic Church of St. Joseph and this was built by one of the wealthy owners because he wanted to have a separate church for the rituals in the family like weddings and funerals and so on. If you have a closer look you can see that it's uh, pretty much reminiscent of the architecture that you could see nowadays in Rome and it's so funny that this is actually a church in Ukraine. Our final destination was the Zolotchev Castle, which is right there, and behind me is the Chinese Palace. So this was another castle that at some point in time was owned by Jan Sobieski, the great Polish king. Obviously, it's trend right now. If you have the money, if you have the power, you will have a castle, and this was one of his castles. His wife at some point in time was very fond of all things Asians, like many European influential ladies, and she gathered her Asian goods, Asian art collection into this Chinese palace. It's said to be one of the three Chinese palaces across Europe that still remains to this day intact and undestroyed by wars. Unfortunately, the palace itself has not the most happy of histories. For hundreds of years, it was a prison, then a concentration camp, and then a prison again so a lot of people were killed here or just died from the conditions in the prison. This castle was one of the safest castles in the region so it was safe enough to leave your family and your wife and your kids here and go to other castles where more active battles were held. Um, nevertheless uh, it's heavily fortified probably one of the most fortified castles that we saw at this point. Look at all of these weapons just to protect the castle here. Now going back to Lviv, one hour and a half in the car. So let's draw the line, you guys. A guided tour with a car was 3,000 grivnias for the whole day. We saw the Olesko, Pithirs and Zolotchev castle. The tour started 9 in the morning and finished almost 6 p.m. To enter the castles we paid 270 grivnias each, including the tour guide. To follow our medieval castles theme of the day, we went to Trapeznaya Day. The restaurant is super hard to find. The entrance is from Valova Street through a store that looks like this. You have to actually go underground, of course, like everywhere in Lviv, and here you are. Trapeznaya Ide is a beloved restaurant among the locals. I got so many recommendations from different people to come here. Originally, it was part of the old Benedictine monastery, and it's a restaurant and bar found in the cellar of the former abbey. The menu includes traditional dishes from the Zakarpatia region. It's cuisine cooked following all recipes. The light was very poor inside, it was candlelight, so these are the best photos that we took, unfortunately, but trust me, the meal was delicious. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.